was this? Montreal, 1849. In the Canadian House of Parliament, Solicitor General William Hume Blake held the floor in a debate that was to have a profound effect on the course of responsible government in Canada. But let me remind you, gentlemen, that it is ten years since the events of those days took place. The rebellion of 1837 lay more than a decade in the past, but it was not forgotten. Now, the newly elected Baldwin-Lafontaine government proposed a bill to compensate persons who had suffered property losses in the rebellion. I shall not tolerate any further demonstrations from the gallery. If they recur, I shall have the gallery cleared. Order! Gentlemen, please! Order, please! The honorable member may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentlemen, as Solicitor General for the government, I submit that after an act of amnesty, it will be disrespectful to Her Majesty and an outrage on a man seeking compensation. The idea of a bill that might compensate rebels or sympathizers roused Sir Alan McNabb and his opposition party to a fury. Let us not reward treason. Order, please. I have heard a great deal of talk here today about loyalty and treason. Gentlemen, I am not here to learn lessons of loyalty from the honorable gentleman opposite. Loyalty to the Queen is the strongest and dearest feeling of my heart. But I have no sympathy with the would-be loyalty of the Tory party, which, while it expresses extraordinary loyalty to the Crown, is ever ready to sacrifice the liberty of the subject. This is not British loyalty, gentlemen. This is a false loyalty, which in all periods of history has lashed humanity into rebellion. Order! Order! Yes, rebellion. The expression rebel has been applied by the gallant knight opposite to some members on this side of the house. But I tell the gentlemen on the other side that their public conduct has proved that they are the rebels to their constitution and country. Does the honorable member apply the word rebel to me? Mr. Speaker, I believe I still have the floor. Does the Honorable Member apply the word rebel to me? I do not deny it. Then I must tell him that what he asserts is a foul lie. Mr. Speaker, I demand that the Honorable Member be made to retract his statement. Mr. Solicitor General, these are harsh words from one member of this House to another. Will you retract your statement, sir? Never! Then I will make you. And so the Rebellion Losses Bill was passed amid scenes of disorder seldom witnessed in a Canadian Parliament. Despite the noisy demonstration. But the bill, although passed, was not yet law. For Sir Alan McNabb and the ultra-Tory opposition, there still remained one possibility. One man who could turn the ashes of their defeat to victory. His name? James Bruce, Earl of Elgin, Governor General of Canada. Good afternoon, Sir Alan. Good day, Your Excellency. I believe you know these gentlemen. Of course, Mr. Cayley, Mr. Cameron. Sit down, won't you, gentlemen? Thank you. Well, now, what can I do for you? We are here, sir, in regard to that unfortunate piece of legislation that was passed in the House recently. I take it you refer to the Rebellion Losses Bill. Your Excellency, I am a direct man, as I believe you know. It is my conviction that the passing of this bill was a tragic blunder. We have come here to ask you to exercise your prerogative as governor, to refuse to sign this bill, and to refer it to the British government. I see. You are irreconcilably opposed to it. I am. And yet, Sir Alan, this bill is not very different from the Rebellion Losses Bill passed earlier in Upper Canada. Surely, sir, you do not regard the citizens of Upper and Lower Canada as equal in loyalty. Are we to be taxed in Upper Canada to pay rebels for their treason in Lower Canada? As I understand the bill, nothing at all is to be paid any person convicted of treason. 
It is a notorious fact, sir, that only a fragment of those actively engaged in the rebellion were ever arrested. True, Sir Allen, and it is this very fact that has contributed to my considering withholding my assent. There can be no other course. But doesn't the amnesty make this fact somewhat irrelevant? Surely, if this country is to survive, we cannot be picking at old wounds forever. I am sorry, sir. The feelings of disgust that I and others of my persuasion have for rebels cannot be legislated out of existence. Gentlemen, I appreciate your feelings. But this bill is the first serious legislation of a government responsible to the will of the people. It was passed, I should remind you, by an English majority, not a French one. As governor, I have the power to refuse my assent. But I must emphasize to you that so long as a governor makes active use of this power, self-government will not be a reality. How can I repudiate the judgment of the elected representatives? Theory is an ideal, sir. Is it your intention to sign this bill? Sir Alan, as you have said, you are a direct man. I shall endeavor to be no less direct. I have not yet decided whether I will sign this bill or not. There are many factors to be considered. But when I do decide, it will be in response to the dictates of my own conscience. I do not deal in threats, sir, but I feel it only fair to warn you that there are large segments of the populace that will react in anger, if not in violence, to the signing of this bill. For these events, I can take no responsibility. We understand each other perfectly, Sir Alan. I confess, I do not understand you, sir. I do not understand how the representative of the Crown can fail to distinguish between the rebels and the loyal subjects of Her Majesty. I do not understand how you can contemplate the signing of this foul bill, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, gentlemen. Major Campbell will see you to the door. That will not be necessary. Well, Tom, out with it. I can see by your face you're brimming with disapproval. Well, sir, was that wise? Baiting McNabb? He's a dangerous man, sir. And you've made an enemy of him. We'll see, Tom. We'll see. There now, isn't that better? I suppose I do feel a little better, Maddox. I'm sure it's boredom that's making me ill. To the governor, the McNabb visit was a disturbing sign. And in this month of April 1849, Lord Elgin had yet another concern. His wife, Lady Mary, was awaiting the birth of her first child. I'm sorry to spend so little time with you, Mary, but I'm uncommonly busy these days. James, there's something the matter. Of course not. Why should there be? There is something the matter. You know you can never hide your feelings from me. Well, as a matter of fact, I've just had a visit from Sir Alan McNabb. McNabb? That horrid man. What did he want here? I believe he came here to try to frighten me. James. Mary, I'm afraid you'll have to know sooner or later. There's going to be trouble over the rebellion losses, Bill. I see. Why have you kept this to yourself? You know how much it means to me. At times, one would have thought you'd introduced it. <laughs> your private bill. <laughs> You're teasing, James. Only to stop your worrying, my dear. Believe me, time will vindicate your father's name. I do believe, James. Except... Oh, I know you think it's silly, but... You're so like him. Like him? I knew his hopes and plans for this colony, his ideals. And I saw him betrayed, his career wrecked by political enemies. All because he wanted to be just and humane. Oh, he was right. But that didn't save him. Rebels should be hanged, they said. Governor Durham's leniency exceeds his authority. So he was recalled to die at 48, 
the ruined man. And would you have had him act differently? Don't let it happen to you. Not now. Mary. I want you to go and stay with the McLaughlins for a while. I've already spoken to Derwood, and they'll be delighted to have you. James. It's less than half an hour's ride from here. I'll be able to visit you every evening. James, listen to me. I have no intention whatever of leaving this house. If there's going to be danger... Mary, I... you know you're not supposed to be subjected to any nervous strain. That's all I'm worried about, really. I am not leaving this house, James. Mary, please. I am not leaving, so you'd best put your mind to it. What kind of wife would I be to leave my husband at the first sign of trouble? Still Durham's daughter. Very well. You'll stay. Of course I will. There was never any question of it. No. I suppose not. That a majority in the House should pass this bill was merely stupid. That the governor should give his assent to it is inconceivable. To do so would raise all the English blood between... Make that Anglo-Saxon blood. Would raise all the Anglo-Saxon blood between Port Sarnia and Gaspé to the boiling point. The governor must not, will not give his assent to this bill. I want that last line in bold type. It is a wise element in colonial administration that the governor retains the prerogative of referring legislation for the judgment of the imperial authorities. Now, in my humble opinion... And I say he's in with the Frenchies' hand and glove. Yeah! Planning to sell out to the very same vermin that you and I were fighting just a few short years ago. Do you remember? Yeah! Well, I remember too! And crush my soul on a fence post if I'll dip into my own pocket to pay them for their treachery! Yeah! Would you mind stepping out of my path, monsieur? Yes, I'd mind, Mr. High and Frenchy. <laughs> Street corner brawls, a gentleman attacked at night. For the times, these were not unusual events. But at the governor's residence, the shadow of violence came at an unfortunate time. Well, Doctor. No cause to be upset, Your Excellency. She's exhausted, but I believe she will be all right. May I go in? Of course, but don't stay too long. Uh, one moment, sir. You should know this. Lady Elgin's condition is entering a crucial phase. It's more important than ever now that nothing happens to upset her. Nothing, do you understand? Yes. Of course, Doctor. Major. Yes, sir. If Monsieur Lafontaine comes before I am down, would you see that he is comfortable? And tell him I won't keep him long. Right, sir. all quite alarmed, imposter. I'm sorry, dear. Are you in much pain? I'm all right now. A little weak. Dr. Cavendish gave me something to make me sleep. Perhaps I should let you rest. No. Don't go. Is everything all right, Jamie? Of course. 
Has there been much trouble about the bill? Nothing to speak of. I understand they've been circulating drawings of me in the streets. I'd have brought you one, but they say the likeness is very poor. James. James, why are you always trying to shield me? Mary, believe me. You mustn't worry about me, Jamie. I'll be all right. You'll see. And the baby, too. I have a lot more to me than either you or the doctor give me credit for. Mary, I'm going to resign. Why should I risk your life for a lot of ungrateful... who don't even want to be helped? I mean it. Let them have any kind of government they want. Well, that looks, sir. And I can assure you that Mr. Baldwin shares my opinion in this. There may even be large-scale mob demonstrations. Surely the Tories won't resort to open violence, sir. Major Campbell, the opposition is a party of desperate men. I'm not prepared to guess what they might or might not do. Monsieur Lafontaine. Je regret de vous avoir fait attendre si longtemps. Je vous en prie, Excellence. And Lady Elgin, I hope she's better, sir. Much thank you. But you must be cold, sir. Major Campbell, would you ask Evans to bring in a little brandy? Yes, sir. And what is the news from the city? Not good, sir. Rumors, tension, no actual outbreak yet, but... Mm. I only hope, sir, that whatever happens, it will not influence your decision regarding the bill. I am not easily intimidated, Monsieur Lafontaine. I am certain of that, sir. But you will understand my anxiety. Oh. And Mr. Baldwin's. It is not just a question of rebellion losses. This bill is a symbol of our ability to govern ourselves. If you do not grant your assent, it will be a long time before the moderate elements of this country can hope again. Mr. Lafontaine. Excuse me. Thank you, Evans. That will be all. Mr. Lafontaine. You will recall that I urged you to withdraw this bill. I am sure you appreciate that its results could be serious for the country. You have my sympathy, sir. I have seen the posters in town. I can imagine some of the comment in England. Believe me, sir, I understand. It was not in that light that Monsieur, I was... let me assure you that our party has every confidence in your integrity. But you and I, we are familiar with the hazards of political life. It is my fervent hope that you will assent. But should circumstances force you to a course of action that is otherwise, believe me, sir, I understand. Sir Fontaine, I can only say that I shall try to do what is best. That is all one can ask. A votre santé. A votre santé. Dirty traitor! From England came reassurance that the governor's actions were approved and his resignation was not desired. Full responsible government should be brought about and parliament should express the voice of the people. But what was the voice of the people? I do not understand how you can contemplate the signing of this foul bill, sir. Lady Elgin's condition is entering a crucial phase. Let us not reward treason. Traitor! Traitor! It will be a long time before we can hope again. Don't let it happen to you. Not now. Let us not reward treason. The signing of this foul bill. It will be a long time before... Here is my news. Don't let it happen to you. Traitor! 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 Major Campbell? Major Campbell, get the carriage. We're leaving immediately. Yes, sir. An act to provide for the building of a bridge crossing the St. Pierre River between the villages of Notre Dame and Terrebonne. On April 25th, 1849, 26 bills passed by Parliament were presented for the Governor's assent. To amend the tariff imposed on woolen and linen goods 
imported into Canada. Unknown to the opposition party, hidden among them was the Rebellion Losses Bill. An act to provide indemnification for parties in Lower Canada whose property was destroyed during the rebellion in the years 1837 and 1838. for the allocation of crown lands to soldiers of Her Majesty. Who at Through the long afternoon, the reading of bills continued, but the fuse of violence had been lit. As the governor's carriage left Parliament for his residence at Monklands, it was caught up in the first angry rumblings of the mob. Shall I go faster, sir? You are doing very well, Thomas. Carry on as you are. It is clearly evident that safety and peace can only be ensured by Your Excellency's quitting the confines of Canada and leaving the affairs of this country in the hands of Sir Benjamin Durban. Sir Benjamin Durban, every moment you remain costs your royal mistress the affection of one of her subjects. And unless you wish your name to go down to posterity, as the fool that lost the Canadas, go home. On April 25th, 1849, this too was the voice of the people. Before the day ended, the House of Parliament was a mass of flames. But Lady Elgin, how is she? It will be some time yet, Excellency. I can't allow you to go in just now. Why don't you take some rest, sir? And I'll call you if what? there's anything to tell you. How is she? I, uh, I won't keep it from you. She has a fight on her hands. But uh, she's a brave lady. You'll let me know the instant there's anything. Of course, Your Excellency. Of course. Sir? Yeah. Sir, I've been sent here by Colonel Archer to guard your residence. My platoon is disposed. Major Campbell... Guard my residence. Sir, they've burned the House of Parliament. The people are rioting out of control. They may be coming here. I see. Sir, I took the yes, liberty... Yes, yes, all right. You did the right thing, Tom. Captain, your men are not to shoot unless personally attacked. I want no bloodshed over this. Very good, sir. Lady Elgin, sir? We'll just have to wait. I'll uh, check the soldiers and see they keep as quiet as they can. swirled and eddied through the streets. At Monklands, they could only wait. Sir, they've turned back. 
They? The mob, sir. I don't think they'll venture from the city again tonight. Monklands is safe, sir. Tom, look after things till I get back. Lady, I'll get she... Oh, she's well, sir. Doing excellently. The doctor says you may go out now. Captain Griffin. Yes, sir? Tell your man to stand by. Before the night is over, this house is going to see a celebration. Son, Your Excellency. Thank God. Jamie. Mary. The child born on this night of violence was Victor Alexander Bruce. Miss Maddox. Your son, sir. May I see him? Yes, sir. Oh, isn't he bonny? He's a Bruce, right enough? Jamie. Six years later, when Lord Elgin said goodbye to Canada, it was to a nation that had undergone an imperceptible but vital change. In Parliament, the Prime Minister was none other than fiery Sir Alan McNabb. And in the McNabb cabinet, sat some of the very men Sir Alan had attacked as rebels in the stormy days of 1849. Responsible government had become a reality. <laughs> <laughs>